All right, take five. In the first episode, or last time I did a YouTube video, I talked about simple automations, how you can approach N8N or Zapier or Make and start doing just simple automations. In this case, I'm integrating with a spreadsheet, which is a great approachable database, honestly. And in that first one I just showed, hey, you could use the AI to go get your email or when your email comes in to go get it and then put it into a spreadsheet as a task or a lead or a recipe or whatever you decide. I have a new one called invoices. I'll show that next time where I get an invoice from a contractor and I remember to pay them and other stuff. So I want to do another automation and this one is just grabbing data from places. So I post data on LinkedIn or a post. And I want to see how they're doing. So how do we get data from LinkedIn? How do we bring it somewhere to a center and then do more with it? So in this case, we're going to get data from a LinkedIn post and we're going to get data from a website and we're going to trigger those events from a spreadsheet. So we're going to add a row in a spreadsheet and then we're going to have the automation go get the data and process it and then push it back into the spreadsheet. Now, one cool thing I want to show here is a tool called Rapid API. It's a service. It was introduced to me a while back, and I wish I could remember his name. And basically, it's a nice way to just talk to APIs that you might not be familiar with or you might not even have access to because of restrictions or difficulty in getting a token. But you can pay them not a ton of money to then talk to that API. So there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's X. There's so many APIs here you can just grab. And Instead of you building a way to talk to it that might be tricky, you can just use this. Now, when I say tricky, we're going to see in N8N we can use these HTTP, HTTP nodes to talk to APIs. But tricky in the sense of, hey, maybe you can't get an official token because it's a long, tedious process and you want to just try it out. So read through these, get a sense of what it can do. And so we're going to use that. <clears throat> Now, we're going to use it for LinkedIn. So I found this one called LinkedIn Data Scraper. This button says subscribe, so I subscribe for free. You can do a three or four for free, and now I can use it. And what it gives me is this curl command. So we're going to use that in a moment, okay? But I want you to remember these curl commands because you'll see them in different places. When we go to fire crawl, we're going to see them as well. So what we're going to do is find a post in then of mine and then get the statistics about it. So how does that work? This trigger node is something built in N8N. And when you add a trigger node for a Google Sheet, it then gets triggered when in every minute or so uh, when a row is added or updated. Depends on what you want. And so again, we can put data into this spreadsheet, which is nice and easy. It can then trigger this to then do something and put data back into the spreadsheet. So in this case, we're saying, hey, this is my URL. This is the sheet I want to update or add. And uh, yeah, let's listen for it. And then in a moment, uh, and it can be tedious, uh, but in a moment, something will come through. You could fetch a test row, you could go edit it, and you could have better spelling than me. But anyways, you can then pin it so you don't have to keep doing that, okay? But it could be tricky if your rows change. Down here is a row. Oh, they don't show it here, but there's a row in here, and you'll see in a moment that can make it tricky. And then the first part of this automation that is really important for you in this next one is really important for you to build automation is an if statement. So there's an if statement and that statement then can help us to put a halt to the process. We're basically saying if the status is pending, we're happy. We want to do something. And if the link is not empty, then we want to do something because maybe I just added the status and forgot to do the link. And the reason I do pending is this. Every time it's updated, it's going to keep running. And if, if, if I don't stop it somewhere, we're going to just loop and loop. So when I'm happy with the particular step, I then immediately set it to running. Okay. And we'll look at that in a moment. So here we are. We go through the first one, which is this purple pinned data. And it's a false. So I'm going to go set that to completed to pending. And this will make sense in a moment. Okay. And so let's run that again. That's what's nice about pin data. You can just change it right there. I want to advertise something here that I built. It's just to help us as contractors to find work and for people looking for contractors to post work for free in a way that then doesn't try to take a bunch of money from us during the process. So you go there, you sign up, you can post jobs. 
And then the contractors who pay the money, about five bucks a month, will then reply and put proposals in for those jobs. And you can accept or not the job and the proposals and go forward. We don't charge you for every hour you bill. We don't charge you for posting to the job. It's a flat fee. It's like under six bucks a month if you're a person looking for work. If you're a person posting those jobs, it's free. So it's just trying to level off this platform. It's just crazy how much I pay at that other provider. So uswork.ai, really give it a try. Help us find people to post jobs there. That's the hardest struggle right now is getting people to put jobs into that system. So we're working on that with marketing and other outreach. All right, thank you very much. Now in here we're saying, okay, great. You've made it this far, but which pathway do I want you to go down? So. We have these types. We have LinkedIn, we have URLs, we have Google Analytics. We can add anything we want there. And then when the switch comes, so this is a switch, we say, hey, if the type is URL, we're going to do this one thing. If the type is LinkedIn, we're going to do this other thing. And in this case, we're going to do URL and LinkedIn. I think this first one will be LinkedIn. So now we're going to go down the LinkedIn path. And like we said a moment ago, I'm going to then say, hey, mark that as what's the word running now why don't we see the row number here that might just be because i'm using some pin data that got messed up so let's see if we can do it this way let's see if i just go technically uh, just mark this as pending and that should trigger something and i'll change the date as well okay so now we're probably going to hit it a few times you see it go to running there and then it did the work so that's good but let's go see what really happened so here's the guy that just ran. I'm gonna copy it to the editor and unpin everything. And now we're back in action. So if we look at our pin data, it's the pending, it's the link, and it's type LinkedIn. And there is no row data here. That's really, oh, here, row number way up here, which wasn't there before. And what's really frustrating with row number, even gets worse, is that when you go to match, so here I said, here's a Google Sheet. I wanna update a row. I could do other stuff. I want to update a row. And oh, that's interesting. I could even append or update. Yeah. There's the URL again. There's the list again. The sh Yeah, I guess it, yeah, it's a sheet. Here's a document. Here's a sheet. And then when I map these, I want to match it on a column. But the row number's here. But this guy is way down here. So you'd be like, where is that? You might have to just scroll way down to get to that. And now we set it to running. So when we do that or do anything here, we don't just keep going around and around. And now, this is the first one I want to show. So back to what I did before that I think I didn't cut is this. I copy that curl and I went over here and I grabbed an HTTP request. And then what I did was all you have to do is basically put the curl in there and go. Now, if you don't, Let's see something really quick. I must have something wrong. It must not like that curl format. I'll have to see if I pasted it wrong or copied it wrong. Let's see. Most of these sites are really good at making properly formatted curl. So this is really, okay, it was just a bad paste. Now, this was empty a moment ago. So let's try that again, okay? I'm gonna add an HTTP. And most docs will have this. If you ever use an API, it's empty. I'm gonna import the curl. And now it's not. So at this point, I'm going to use it to post. Now, this is hard coded here, <clears throat> and I don't want that. So if I just hook this up for just a moment, we won't keep it here. But if I just hook this up for just a moment, and we click the expression here, and we just get rid of that, and we click on this guy, we can then grab our, our, our information. So we could grab the link right from here, OK? And so now we're going to go get that URL and get the information. So if we ran that, we should see the results here in a moment. So we see the results like this, okay? And so at this point, I'll just move it over here just for the heck of it. At this point, you can see now I can go back to that Google Sheet, same URL, same sheet, same document, same sheet. And I match each column manually and I match up that row number. And again, we go grab that row number from way back here. And we then fill in the particular responses. So I think the responses are here and you just find the responses you want and you just put them into where you want them. See how easy that is? So now we have the data where we want it and we've marked it as like when I last ran it. And then I think it should be marked, oh, I haven't finished running it. 
So I think at this point, it should be marked done. Now I have a weird loop here. I'm not loop, I have a weird path. So it was went around, but now it's marked complete. So that was our first example of getting data from someplace and triggering it again, and then put it back into the spreadsheet. The next one is gonna be fire crawl. And this is a great way to just quickly get stuff from a website. So if you log in, go to the dashboard, use the playground, it's pretty darn cheap, maybe even free for some first stuff, but it's some of this stuff, I don't know, you can find options. NADN has some HTTP stuff built in, but you can't always use it because some of these sites require a little bit more JavaScript. So you just can't always do that. I'll add a new one. And let's do that here. And we just paste in that curl. And again, it's going to fill in everything for us. Okay. Now I'm not going to keep that here because we got it here already. I think we do. I don't know if I ever finished this because I didn't want to do it this way. So in my case, I actually put fire crawl into the auth. So I take a moment to say authentication generic. And then I take a moment to say it's header auth because their auth is a little bit different. It's not bearer. Oh, it is bearer. Then I probably could just do it this way. Let me try this. So I'm going to say generic. And the predefined is when you use built-in nodes. Really handy. But fire crawl isn't built in yet. It is, but that's based off of the community node I installed. I just want to not use that for just a moment. It's great. I just I had a few moments with it. I'm like, ah, I just don't want to deal with that. But I'm going to do bearer auth. And then I'm going to add a new credential and I'm going to put that bearer token in this and name it correctly. And then we'll do that. Okay. And then we'll close that and we'll close that. And we have our JSON and we have nothing else. Now, this JSON represents my hard coded stuff I got from there. So let's do the same thing we did before. So let's do this. We're going to force another update. So let's go here and we're going to say type. Uh, URL, and I wish the drop down list worked. I do not know why it does not. I'm going to do pending, and then I'm going to put that simple recipe link in there, and then uh, that will trigger uh, some of this. Okay, so let's go back, and let me close that because I keep opening it, and go back to here. Now, in a moment, and it could be not yet, no, not yet, in a moment it will run, so just give it a moment, and then we'll go get that pin data and we won't have to do it again. I'm going to actually try something. I want to see if it works. I'm going to open up this guy and say fetch. I'm just curious if it will fetch it. No, it did not fetch it. So it fetches something I didn't want. I don't understand fetch. Okay, here we go. Here we got something here. So we have this. Oh, this is the one I ran. This is the one we probably want. So let's do this one. So I'm going to debug it in the editor. And I didn't get the unpinning modal. So sometimes that means there's a bug, unless it's your first time. I'm going to reload, and I should get the unpinning modal. I didn't. So maybe let's see what the pin data is. Oh, it's already set, so I must have just missed it. So now we have the one we wanted, which is simple recipe URL. And then we go, okay, does it have a link? Yes. Does it have a status pending? Yep. Okay. Then we're going to go through to switch and switch is going to say URL. If it's URL, let's keep going. And then we're going to go down the URL and we're going to go into that Google sheet and once again, mark it running. And then we're going to go here and use this new API crawler we made. Now, authorization failed. I just added it with that token. So I'm going to assume for a moment that is a bad token. And I'm going to just choose, I'm going to choose generic and I'm going to choose Oh, maybe that's what I did wrong. Let me see if this one works. We'll look in a moment. But before I run that, I want to do this. Remember here, we never fixed this. <clears throat> so I'm going to consistently get the information for that same recipe. So we're going to click expression. We're going to pop this open so we have a little bit more access to data. And then we're going to go in here and say, yeah, this is the URL I want. Okay. So now we can run it and see if the authentication works. So it's just because I had this as predefined, I had it wrong. Now we have our recipe. And then the next step, I want to take that recipe and just mess around with it. I want to say, let's go update, URL, sheet, and row number. Here's our row number. The data I just grabbed is the markdown. And then the updated at, I want to just let the sheet know I did the update. And then I'll just run that. 
and then we got our recipe okay again like it, you can trigger something after this say you mark this not to complete but to say ready to share maybe you say send email and so whatever you can then do another switch based off of that so you can keep going on this if you want it's just a nice easy way to get data from one place to another and, and you don't have to build any complex tooling around it you could use monday.com you could integrate with that system and go back and forth it's pretty nice what you can do we have our data we have our nn and 8m we see how rapid and and firecrawl can get those but otherwise i just wanted to show that and i think that covers everything for this training oh there's one more thing and that was not done on purpose that's just bad memory remember too we could <clears throat> always schedule these things and say every day go do this and that scheduler would say okay go get me everything in the sheet that's typed linkedin because maybe i want to go get my stats every day and i could have them emailed to me right so we could say get my stats from today sorry get all the stuff from that google sheet that is type linkedin status completed i don't know what this is market running okay i don't know why and then go scrape over now what's funny here is you would think that since there could be more than one item that i would have to loop over this but i don't it's like a built-in loop i don't totally get it but it works and so if this was three rows you would still just put it right into this you don't have to you could loop and so then this guy will do what we've been doing all along it will go go get the data and then it will write it back to the spreadsheet and that is it. You could then have daily numbers and you could, if you want, send them to yourself. Now, this is where <clears throat> I don't know what I would do if I want to send it because without the loop, I don't have that sense of over. So you could take a moment to turn this into a loop. And ironically, between the if statement, the switch statement and the loop statement, you have 80% of what it takes to almost do anything for automations, in my opinion. The HTTP and so forth <clears throat> but what i was going to say with this one is i could then loop and then i could i could then say uh, execute once so i'm just going to do this because i cheat and i do that and then i could then send this as an email to myself so i could say here's your daily report of numbers and at the end of all this it would just send those out so that's a nice way how you could just with this one scheduler node make a daily report for yourself and just remind yourself, hey, this is it. Or you can send it to Mattermost or Slack or whatever. All right, simple automations, business owners, whoever, a good way to get started. But this can also drive the back end of your application. It's pretty crazy. All right, thank you.